Okay, so, yeah, I was just going to say that I'm Rich, and now we're going to make some very terrible beer out of some very average beer. Uh, okay, so, why would you want to do a make-off flavour as well? You need to learn how to identify what's wrong with your beer when you've brewed it, and you think there's something up, then it's good to know what the off flavours are so you can identify what's wrong and help you make and fix the problems with your beer so it doesn't go wrong next time, or with your friend's beer. Don't be too rude. Um, it's also part of beer judge training. You, in that case, you might get one of the off flavour kits, or you might just do something like this. Uh, it's a good way to learn uh, what can go wrong with beer uh, and how it goes wrong. So, commercial off flavour kits. Commercial off flavour kits are quite expensive. They're very expensive, actually, and they go for a small number of people. For about 10 people, you're probably talking about 80 to 100 quid to get eight flavours. It's about 10 or a flavour. Uh, depending on what ones you get. Um, and they do for a pet kit, when you get it, will serve maybe 10 people. You'll get for a lot of cheap beer and try all the flavours. But if you don't want to spend that money, what can we do ourselves? So, on to the interesting bit. So, how do you make off flavours? Well, there's lots of things that go wrong with beer, some of which the easy thing is, the easiest ones do, you just do what we, the bad thing is. Uh, the first example we've got today is here. It's been in this glass bottle in the sunshine for two days. <laughs> Um, don't do that with your normal beer, it's a really bad idea. Uh, in other cases, you can just add the actual chemical, it's freely available some for household use. Cetic acid, for example, vinegar, nice and easy. You can add a bit of that. Uh, then, when it gets a bit more complicated, you can just fake it. Uh, you can either make a thing that tastes a bit like it, or you can buy some commercial flavourings. In many cases, the commercial flavourings are made with what is actually the chemical in the beer off flavour. Uh, so in the case of the last label we've got here for diacetyl, fake butter flavouring that you usually get popcorn and things, some people missing glasses, a small glass. So, I'm going to have them things grab. Um, it's usually made with diacetyl or is often made with diacetyl. I've gone forward as far too fast. There we go. Uh, in other cases, you can try a flavour that you think is close. The last one we've got here is an experiment. I'm not entirely sure it's going to match the flavour. We'll see when we get there. So, a lot of the ones I've done today, I've stolen the idea, I originally stole the idea of these uh, the Crafty Beer Girls website. Uh, they have a good article on faking off flavours, um, so I'll give them credit where credit is due. Um, some of them are quite hard to get in the UK, but I've gone for the nearest equivalent. What we're going to do today, we're going to try a number of these. I want to know from everybody what you think works and what doesn't work. At the end, there's a link, there's a QR code off to a website that gives you some feedback. You can score each one out of five to see if it works or doesn't. And I'll stick that up somewhere later on. But I'll be asking for general feedback as we go through this and what people think of all these horrible ideas, things to do to beer. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. I'll start by handing this around. You pop the lid off that and take a small sample. Uh, I have here a couple of drugs. These are available as dump drugs for getting rid of it when it's out when you've tried it. <laughs> so, for this one, I simply bought some cheap lager from Tesco's. Uh, the, first, the cheapest one they do in bottles. Cheap Tesco's German lager. I picked something that was a bit, bit hoppy because the main reaction in light struck beer is a reaction from the alpha acids uh, reacting with UVB, uh, which is interesting because only a little bit of that gets through glass, but it appears to work. Uh, I put it into a clear bottle, this clear bottle, and then I stuck it on the windowsill for two days. Um, it's not very nice. <laughs> I'll keep going around with that one. I'm gonna, there's going to be a row of these flavours coming around. and like, You may be one or two behind. Um, so this one's fairly easy. Um, I would suggest you're picking a fairly hoppy, fairly cheap beer and don't do too much of it. You don't want any of this left lying around. Um, naturally, I did pick the days when the sun stopped shining, but there we go. Okay, number two, oxidised. Now, I have a couple of ideas about how to do this one. I'll start with the oxidised beer uh, over here. A um, couple of ideas about how to do this one. Uh, this is the one from the Crafty Beer Girls website. <coughs> I've got three cans of beer. I'll leave you to guess what it was. Can't remember off the top of my head, it's some English bitter. Um, Open them up, put tea towels over the top so flies didn't fly into them, and left them out for two days. 
Um, this one I don't think has worked quite as well. A couple of other ideas have come up with this one that I've thought about. You could do something just, very noisy. Just the tank expanded. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 That's pretty close. The other concept was to bubble air through it. Just get your oxygen tank or your air filter perfect to sound effect. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, a bubble bubbles some oxygen yeah, through it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do that in this case because I was expecting it to uh, knock the carbonation out. Uh, you could then recarb, but we went for this one this time around. Um, once again, be a bit careful with it to not get flies in it. Um, and yeah, it's not great, and it's not quite as bad as it could have been. Okay, has everyone managed to get at least one terrible sample? <laughs> Any thoughts on the terrible samples yet? Or have it be uh, light struck one go? They would know what a skunk smells like. It's supposed to smell of skunk. Definitely. Yeah. 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 Stale. Yeah. Stale, yeah. yeah. Is the oxidized one oxidized? Oh, yeah. Slightly. Slightly, slightly. Yeah, I didn't think it had gone very far. Oxidation is quite interesting because there's people say you get the papery flavours out. Some of the more recent research says you're getting some other flavours out. I've written these down because they're too complicated to remember. <laughs> uh, piece of paper. So, some of the, uh, you can get others from some onion-like flavours to what we've been seeing in modern tin beers, the generation of melanoidins from oxidation, which I think is probably what's making first tins people have done go dark, if people have seen that happening among commercial beers. Okay, load the place. Offload kit, thank you, offload. Light struck, oxidised, acetic. Now we're on to some really exciting stuff. Now, this is where we start getting some really dull beer. So I brought you some Carly. I know, I treat you all. So, uh, it's probably a can of row, it's probably enough. Um, so when you're doing off flavours, you want to pick a beer to add, it, add the flavours to that's fairly low on excitement uh, and is cheap. Um, you pass them back. Uh, cheap being the important bit, because you don't, we're about to ruin it, and I don't really mind ruining Carly. <laughs> It does take a lot. Yeah. Uh, you also need to be a little bit careful not to, to pick a beer that already has terrible off flavours in it. Uh, so, uh, so things like some of the light American lagers, which you could use, but they all really start with a bit of an apple flavour in, um, which could be acetic, uh, not acetic, acetaldehyde. There we go. So, you probably just going to pour a little bit, you're going to do several of these. Um, also, going around, useful thing if you are doing off flavours, uh, pipette. I bought like a hundred of these off Amazon for about two quid. Um, a handful of parcels back. Handful of I can use pipettes to pass back. Okay, so acetic. We've got some fairly, fairly dull beer. Distilled vinegar. Uh, well, what you can do with this, you've got a pet, is just to put a few drops in and keep putting a bit more in it until you can taste it. And try and work out about where your flavour threshold is. Uh, 10 mil is the advised type. Some people say you need to put a little bit of the uh, diastole flavour in as well, because they often come out together, but I'll let you try that later on when we reach the end. Okay, this is going to take a minute to come around, so we'll keep going. Now, the other obvious one that brewers often have lying around is lactic, lactic acid. Uh, you can buy this off brewing shops uh, fairly easily. Some people use it to adjust the pH of their mash. Uh, some people do, do it by it to get do fake sours where it doesn't work that well, but it's all right, you can adjust the sourness. Um, yeah, so you can get all the bottles of this for a few quid from your brewing shop. Uh, this one, once again, add a few drops and see if you can taste it. You should be getting that should be giving uh, some fruity and then some acidic ones. That should give you the sourness and some yogurty sort of flavours as well. Uh, again, ready to dump them. How's the acetic acid doing? Have you made it? Do you manage to make some fairly unpleasant beer there? So 
So how many drops do you think is about right for the acetic? Five is too many. Five is too many. <laughs> Ten mils probably way too much for the acetic. That's what we can buy on the site. <laughs> yeah, this is the old thing about some of these off flavors you pouring beer kits. You can make it better. Um, <laughs> exactly. Um, Especially when we had a geranium. Yeah, that was really tasty, wasn't it? Um, right, next one. Now this is what among the silliest things I've done related to brewing. Made some scary yellow shit. <laughs> uh, so, we've got a fairly dull beer. I got some canned corn. Now, a lot of the, the people who fake these up say you should buy Creed's corn. Can you buy it in the UK at the moment? Can you fuck? <laughs> Can't find it anywhere. So, I got some normal corn, sweet corn. Uh, blended it up, pass it through a sieve, like a chef, you know, squeeze it through the sieve. You get a liquid out the bottom. Uh, and I'm going to suggest you put some of this in your beer. Um, yeah, it looks scary. Don't look at the beer when you put it in. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, this should give you some idea of the cooked corn is often common descriptor. So this is one of the more you're chasing what the flavour is. I think this one, when I've tried it, it gives you a little bit more sweetness than you'd expect from DMS on its own. The natural sugars in the in the corn, uh, but it's actually pretty close to how it tastes for me, at least. <laughs> Cool. Right. How are we doing on there? I've got uh, corn going back that way, various acid going that way. Excellent. I'll keep these flowing for fun and excitement. Only a couple more to go. It's in there. <laughs> so, how many of these are improving the carling? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a lot of that to taste it, and not a lot of the seat. I'm well aware. I'm well aware. <laughs> we have quite a lot of the seat beers over the years. Yeah, I'm judging the competition. I get enough of them. Okay. So, now on to actually adding some chemicals. Um, this is cooking butter flavour. Uh, which almost certainly, they never tell you what it's actually made of, but I suspect it actually does have diastyl in it, uh, because it is commonly used as a butter flavour in food. You can buy these little bottles for a few quid, uh, they're worth a go. Um, so, I think a few drops is probably enough for that one. Um, 30 drops per pint is pushing it, that's for an American flavouring, before I sniffed that one. <laughs> Um, a lot of these flavours are available online. A lot of these will be the ones you can also get these butter flavours from the places that Andy was talking about for getting uh, food flavourings. They'll do these as well. Um, they're actually the chemical. So, how we're doing? We've got vinegar's got round to there. Lactic acid is coming down this way. The vinegar's there. Uh, that's there. Sweet corn, who's got the sweet corn? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, last one's an experiment. <laughs> and then I'll talk about a few things you shouldn't do. So I've tried a few that really don't work. Okay, so coming around this way. We have some sour apple fruit, fruit flavour. <laughs> Chicken flavour, I don't think it's good. Uh, sour, this is once again, we're chasing what we think the flavour is described as in this case, not uh, 
what it actually is. Um, this might work, this might not. Some people thought the acid aldehyde gives you sour apple, green apple. Uh, some people thought more about pumpkin, more about other ones. <laughs> you have apple beer now over there. Um, so be careful with how much we do, probably a couple of drops. These food fragrances are pretty powerful stuff. <laughs> I'm getting some good expressions from the floor now. <laughs> okay, so things not to do. Uh, one thing I've, I've, I've been told works, that I don't believe does when I've tried it, uh, is using uh, throat spray, the stuff you set get to stop your throat from hurting. Uh, it's supposed to, to be quite good for making chlorophenolic flavours. Um, it doesn't work, it just makes your taste buds go numb. <laughs> <laughs> um, what the tape is uh, Yeah. Um, so don't do that. The homebrewers make enough chlorophenolic beer, just wait till one turns up at your club. <laughs> How are we doing? Just keep, keep those going. <laughs> so, which is the least pleasant so far? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good call. I think it depends on personal taste. For me, yes. I like the classic one. Yeah, that can get really pretty. Oh, yeah, okay. It's just unpleasant fairly fast. Okay, so that's all the flavours for today. Uh, the QR code leads to a survey. If you want to come take a picture of that at the end uh, for telling you which ones you thought were best, which ones worked, which ones worked, and which ones didn't. So, Feedback and comments, who thought what worked and tasted like an off flavour and what didn't, uh, go. Sour apple worked well, but a few weeks ago, very, 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 very lightly, one drop is more than that. So delicate. Any other, any other thoughts on those flavours? Nice, that'll be the job. <laughs> yeah. So you've got your shadow out of the way. I think, I think you have to be careful with that, because I found that here. Wing it on the glass. Yeah, yeah, but I thought I've got some rinse water as well, but that would involve going upstairs. Are you going to sweep that uh, QR code out as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll think, do that later. I think all of those flavours, you could tell they weren't right yeah. in some way, shape, or form, yeah. as opposed yeah. to what a good beer should, should taste like. So, therefore, if you're tasting any of those, even if you couldn't identify so what they were, yeah, you could identify yeah. the other yeah. top. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's worth knowing what they are. I mean, in this talk, I've not gone through what causes them. We do course sessions on that quite regularly. One of us too usually does. Oh, Lee. Um, so yeah. And what I've got you here, come to Manchester Homebrew Exposition uh, on the 4th of August in Manchester. We'll be serving a lot of good homebrew, not bad homebrew. <laughs> and not curling either. No curling. And finally, I think you need to do that. <laughs> okay, thoughts and questions? Any questions? So, how do you differentiate if you get homebrew submission? Yeah. How do you then dismiss that when it could be of a style? So like you can't get a bit. Yeah, it should have it. Well all the, the style descriptions do have whether diastole is appropriate or not in there. Right. It's usually all the basically all the English ones are allowed a little bit and a few others. Yeah. Go on. Uh, I think judging is good fun and it's really there to give feedback rather than, yeah, you win. In case you win, that's nice and shiny. Um, I can say something to that. Peer judging has certainly improved my homebrew. Yeah. I'm going to say during competitions getting 20 points before I learned to judge, I ended up winning the 2017 national beer group. Uh, once you know how to judge beer and assess it, 
Okay. Any more? No, quick, run and go and get a decent beer. <laughs> <laughs>